My name is Bob Greenier and I'm a volunteer for the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So I'm here up in Newcastle and what we are looking at here is the Lion Reactor Platform. Um, and there are a bunch of power supplies here. So that's the big one. We know that this has a 22 kilohertz ripple on it or something similar. We can verify that by looking at this. So this is very important to see the parameters of this power supply because when we attempted to replicate in America, the MFMP, we firstly only ran it up to 850 degrees. We know now uh, since that it actually went to 1,050 uh, uh, degrees, and that was because the thermocouple placement had an offset, and so it wasn't reading the proper temperature. So that definitely would have been a, a, a stopper. But also we replaced the power supply that had a ripple with a very high quality power supply that didn't have a ripple. And because of the magnetostriction effect, uh, I believe is uh, uh, introducing uh, sound uh, waves by way of the internal iron rod. Uh, we were effectively removing the high frequency sound in the, the reactor. And so um, that's probably one reason or a couple of reasons why we failed. Anyway, so here, um, I think this was largely built by looking for heat, but it might have some um, modifications on here. There is some sort of tick here, um, and then we have a button here, and then we have a uh, variable resistor. There seems to be a PID controller here, which I know he used. There is some sort of, I think, thermometer here, 50 to 1,200 degrees C. There's a volts, amps, and watts meter over here. There's a speed controller here. So did he have a fan, or did he have some other thing attached to the top I don't know and there is this other kind of a AC 220 volt something else going on here and uh, variously wired in okay and actually he has this framework over the top and at least to one of the holes he had uh, the uh, thermometer here and he also had some other things like this cold cathode tube. So I don't know, there's a, there's a whole bunch of mystery here, but by looking at this and looking at these units, you can see what he had in play for his experiments. And hopefully when we look at his log books, we'll be able to work out what he did with various experiments. But uh, definitely looking at the specifics of his power supply, which you can see there is 48 volts, 8.3 amps, uh, S448, one, and I guess we can work out what the output settings are. There's a little pot down there that configures things. So there we go, that is for another day, but that is captured. Thank you very much for your time, I'll see you in the next video.